one of the more obscure battles of the First English Civil War. The Battle of Lostwithiel took place in the rugged countryside of southern Cornwall, in the far west of England, when King Charles I led his forces against the Earl of Essex and his parliamentary army, achieving a striking victory that put the parliamentary commander to flight and saw the surrender of their forces in the region. But despite this superb triumph for the king's army, the defeated parliamentary factions would find great resolve in their loss. While the distraction the Cornish campaign caused would ultimately lead to various factors that came to bring about the Royalists' final defeat in the wider war. The events leading up to the Battle of Lostwithiel began in June 1644, when following the successful campaign of Prince Maurice and his Royalist army in capturing towns along the south coast of Hampshire, Dorset and Devon, the strategically important harbour town of Lyme, now Lyme Regis, became threatened, and thus called the hand of the parliamentary forces to relieve those troops defending the port, while at the same time warding off the advance of King Charles I, who led his own army out of the royalist stronghold of Oxford, the parliamentary armies of the Earl of Essex and Sir William Waller being split on two fronts, with Waller covering the northern flank against the king's army, while Essex moved to support the forces in Lyme, leading in the former's case to a devastating defeat at the Battle of Cropready Bridge that saw Waller's army destroyed, while in the latter's case, Prince Maurice was forced to abandon his siege of Lyme and retreat to the west. With Lyme having been successfully relieved, Lord Robarts, a senior officer in the parliamentary army, persuaded Essex to move his forces west into Cornwall so as to gather civilians who were believed to be sympathetic to the parliamentary cause, thereby allowing him to conquer all royalist garrisons currently stationed in the southwest of England. Essex convening a council of war at Weymouth on June 19, 1644, during which the council's advice was for Wessex to lead his troops into western England so as to prevent Prince Maurice from recruiting men from Devon and Cornwall. King Charles I, upon his victory at the Battle of Cropready Bridge, receiving word that Essex was leading his army west into Cornwall, and thus set off in pursuit, ignoring further news received at the same time that in the far north of England, the Royalist forces had been decisively routed by the combined armies of the Parliamentarians and the Scottish Covenanters at the Battle of Marston Moor near Harrogate in Yorkshire, a crushing defeat that left the entire northern flank of the Royalist army essentially undefended. On July 23, 1644, Essex's troops arrived in the small town of Tavistock, near the border between Devon and Cornwall, thus forcing the Royalist commander, Sir Richard Grenville, to abandon his siege of the parliamentary port city of Plymouth and move to a defensive position on the west banks of the River Tamar at Horsebridge, followed three days later by Essex's army crossing into Cornwall and sweeping aside Grenville's smaller factions, or while the King's army, having reached Exeter, was marched at forced pace to Launceston in Cornwall, so as to intercept Essex's army at Bodmin, the parliamentary leader finding that, rather than receiving a warm reception among the local population, as per what intelligence had led him to believe, instead was met with open hostility by the Cornish. All while the King's army, together with the forces of Prince Maurice, Sir Ralph Hopton and Sir Richard Grenville, converged and cut off his means of escape, demanding that he march his parliamentary troops south towards the small town of Lostwithiel, and eventually the harbour at Foy, where the parliamentary fleet of the Earl of Warwick could extract them. In order to defend their escape, the parliamentary army established fortifications around Lostwithiel, being positioned on the east side of the Foy River, around the high ground of Beacon Hill, and on the west side of the river at Restormal Castle to the north, while cavalry units patrolled the army's flanks between the two main detachments of foot, Sir Richard Grenville and his royalist army capturing Bodmin on August 11th, and subsequently joining up with the King's army from Launceston, the parliamentary forces now boxed into the valley of the Foy River, being surrounded on all sides by the royalist divisions. Grenville to the west, and the King to the north and east, while troops under the command of Lord Goring and Sir Jacob Astley positioned themselves at the coastal fort of Pole Ruin that overlooked the mouth of the Foy River, thus cutting off any means of escape for the parliamentary troops, as Warwick's fleet could not move into the harbour without being bombarded by royalist guns, compounded further by an unfavourable westerly wind that made navigating into the narrow estuary near impossible. Completely cut off from any parliamentary reinforcements, with a relief column under the command of General Sir John Middleton being intercepted by the Royalist troops of Sir Francis Doddington at Bridgewater, while the remnants of Sir William Waller's army no longer constituted a reliable fighting force after its defeat at the Battle of Cropready Bridge, the King's Royalist army launched its attack at 7am on August 21, 1644, using the thick morning mist to cover their approach, while at the same time, on the west bank of the Foy River, Sir Richard Grenville advanced on the parliamentary position in Restormal Castle, leading Colonel John Weir's Devonshire Regiment to hastily abandon their position, the Royalist assault on the parliamentary positions at Beacon and Druid Hills easily capturing this vital high ground, while Prince Maurice crossed the Liscard Road 
and took another prominent hill on the far side, meaning that, by nightfall, the royalists had fully surrounded the town of Lostwithiel and had the advantage of their hilltop positions. After two days of little activity, the royalists quickly came to the conclusion that the parliamentary forces had abandoned Lostwithiel and escaped down the valley to Foy, the king sending half his mounted force across the Resperin Bridge to support Sir Richard Grenville in an advance on Lostwithiel down the west bank of the Foy River, only to find that the parliamentary troops still occupied the town in strength, causing the advance to be promptly halted, while on August 26th, Lord Goring, with a cavalry of 2,000 horses, marched in a southwesterly direction to St. Blasey, so as to sever Essex's supply chain from the west, this force moving to capture the town of St. Austell and the coastal village of Parr four miles to the west of Foy, thus confining Essex's parliamentary army to a narrow strip of land from Lostwithiel, down the west bank of the Foy River, to Foy on the coast, two miles wide and two miles long, the parliamentary troops being starved out, while the royalists received fresh supplies from Dartmouth that included 1,000 barrels of gunpowder for the army's muskets and cannons. Realising the hopelessness of his situation, Essex proposed a breakout with his cavalry that would escape to the east on the night of August 30th, 1644. The royalists, aware of this move to escape the blockade, fortifying cottages along the Liscard Road and tearing down the bridge at Saltash so as to preclude their ability to cross the River Tamar. The cavalry making their move at 3am on the following morning and comprised 2,000 men under the command of Sir William Balfour, this audacious plan working wonders as these parliamentary troops were able to dash down the Liscard Road and crossed the Tamar by way of the ferry at Mount Edgecombe, joining their comrades at the stronghold in Plymouth with a force that, despite the royalist defences, had only lost 200 men and was thus generally still intact. An attempted intercept of this cavalry by the Earl of Cleveland's 500-man brigade of horse being too late to catch the charge. With the cavalry having made its escape, Essex ordered his troops out of Lostwithiel under cover of night, followed at 7am by the advance of the King's army into the town from Beacon Hill, 1,000 musketeers storming the bridge over the Foy River and sweeping away any remaining parliamentary troops still defending the town, beginning a running battle that continued south out of the town along the Foy Valley that was subsequently joined by Sir Thomas Grenville's own Cornish troops. Such was the panic among the parliamentary ranks that they clumsily left vital supplies and weapons in their wake that were promptly captured by the royalists, including an abandoned wagon loaded with muskets and five cannons, an attempted defence mounted by parliamentary foot soldiers being broken by a counter-attack launched by the King's army, forcing Essex's full retreat to Foy at 4pm. By nightfall, the Royalist advance had pushed the parliamentary troops into the town, and with there being no hope of any further breakout by his forces, Essex resolved to escape by small boat to Plymouth and then to London in the company of his personal staff and Lord Robarts, the man who had originally urged his incursion into Cornwall, command of the surviving parliamentary troops in Foy being assigned to Philip Skippen though he was not given clear instructions as to how he should mount his defence, September 1st seeing little activity as the royalists maintained their siege, simply starving out the parliamentary troops and awaiting their inevitable surrender. Skippen, in the face of depleted food stocks, a barely functional defence, and a demoralised army deserting rapidly throughout the course of the day, ultimately surrendering on September 2nd, 1644, the king permitting Skippen and his troops to march away to Southampton after handing over 42 guns, 100 barrels of gunpowder, and 5,000 muskets and pikes. In the end, the Battle of Lostwithiel resulted in around 500 parliamentary troops being killed in the fighting, and the loss of all 45 artillery pieces to the King's army, while in the subsequent march to Southampton, of the 6,600 troops remaining in Skippen's force, around half of those deserted en route, while the Royalists, despite their own superior strategies, suffered around 500 men killed or wounded, Royalist troops escorting the defeated parliamentary soldiers on their march to Southampton, but did nothing to deter the theft and plunder of the enemy as they passed through various towns and villages along the way, the locals justifying their robbing of valuables from the parliamentary troops by stating that these had been looted from them originally during their advance through Devon, Dorset and Hampshire. Despite the King's victories at Cropready Bridge and Lostwithiel being decisive, and ultimately leading to the complete destruction of the parliamentary forces in the west of England, with the exception of the Plymouth garrison, the overwhelming defeat of Essex and his men led the parliamentary commanders to completely revise the training and strategy of their troops so as to ensure that they had a formidable fighting force available to combat the king on even terms, leading eventually to the formation of the fearsome new model army that would come to overwhelm the royalists as the war drew on. While the distraction caused by the Cornish campaign meant King Charles completely ignored the advance of the parliamentary and Scots Covenanter forces from the north, a far more immediate threat that split the king from his Scottish royalist factions north of the border, 
which, in combination with the creation of the new model army in early 1645, would fatally undermine the king's campaign, and bring about his defeat during June 1646 that ended the First English Civil War.